the next case is we are having a charged conductor and we have to find out electric field intensity just near it so i am having a conductor of arbitrary shape or size and suppose it is charged in such a way that the charge is uniformly distributed and its surface charge density is sigma so as i am assuming this is a conductor so conductor has got two properties the first property is any charge given to a conductor it simply resides on the surface only and second thing is electric field inside a conductor is zero later on we'll discuss in detail about these two concepts so now our target is to find out the electric field intensity only so let us suppose there is a point p which is much nearer to the surface and we have to find out electric field intensity at this point p okay so what i am going to do i will consider a gaussian surface and the gaussian surface which i am taking over here that is a cylindrical gaussian surface and suppose its area is a fine <clears throat> so the first step as we know first step is to consider the gaussian surface so gaussian surface we have assumed and the surface is cylindrical gaussian surface and second step is to find out flux and the flux is integral evs cos theta so this is the third time when we have chosen a cylindrical gaussian surface so we are familiar how to find out the flux in case of cylindrical gaussian surface okay so for the surface one electric field will be zero as i just told you electric field inside a conductor is zero so if electric field is zero the flux passing through this much part that will also be zero okay for surface number two electric field will be away from the gaussian surface or away from the charged conductor while area vector will be normally outward so in this case theta will be 90 degree okay so for third surface electric field is away from the charged conductor and this area vector will be normally outward so in this case this theta will be 0 degree so again let us understand the angles for surface number 2 electric field is away from the charged conductor and area vector will be normally outward so theta becomes 90 degree and for surface number 3 electric field and area vector both are in the same direction that is why theta is zero in this case we don't need to consider theta actually the reason is this point or this phase is lying inside the conductor and electric field inside the conductor is zero so that is why we don't need to consider angle over here because electric field is already zero there so this flux again we will write the same term for three surfaces 1 2 and 3 for surface number 1 electric field is zero so this term will be zero only and uh, for second surface theta is 90 that is why this term will be zero and for third surface angle is 0 degree so it will become eds cos zero now so it is clear from here that only third term we are having so flux will be cos zero will be 1 and uh, due to symmetry electric field at each and every point of the phase will be same so electric field is a constant we have e integral ds for surface 3 surface 3 is having an area a so the flux passing through the gaussian surface becomes e into a this is equation number one now next step we have to find out flux using gauss law so flux will be 1 upon epsilon naught times q net so okay q net 
so how much area of the spherical surface is lying inside the gaussian surface area at this point is a so area this area will also be equal to a only and surface charge density is sigma so total charge inside the gaussian surface will be sigma a <coughs> this is equation number 2 last step comparing 1 and 2 we have uh, that e into a is equals to sigma a upon epsilon naught a and a will cancel out and we have that electric field is sigma upon epsilon naught